So very interesting article, right? Um, in terms of, you know, the reasons why uh, there are likely to continue to be divergences between, uh, you know, Europe, uh, and the UK and the US and so um, does that mean it's going to happen again like just trading the probabilities of the, the likelihood of one thing happening over another no one has a crystal ball but I thought it was a really interesting article and um, and so we're going to come to as well a bit of a juncture um, and I can see it on the horizon and so how best to kind of explain this one second um, because typically what we know about interest rates is, sorry guys, I'm just looking for a uh, color, right? Right, so what we typically know about, you know, interest rates when it comes to, um, you know, what you should be buying versus what you should be selling is you, 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 you normally want to buy the currency that is uh, hiking rates versus the one that basically isn't, right? That's what you want to do. Um, and as it, it was saying in the article, was that um, the, the, the US are probably likely or more likely to come to their interest rate hiking cycle uh, or to end their interest rate hiking cycle first, right? And, you know, some of the reasons they gave was because, um, you know, the Fed said so also as well. Um, uh, there was a case of they where well, they started hiking first. And so they're probably like likely to, uh, um, you know, to end their hiking cycle first. Right. But, you know, and this is this this comes after last week's where we talk, we were talking about, you know, the pivot. Right. Fed pivot. To from a hawkish um pivot to maybe a more dovish pivot where you know they were hiking 75 basis points and now they're probably starting to look to hold rates and then you know and then maybe the following years looking to potentially actually cut rates but while we're here at this end of the cycle as we start to come to the end um there's going to be a period where um you're going to still have the you know the bank of england or they're likely to as it was saying, and Europe, the ECB, right, are still likely to continue hiking rates. Yeah. So in that situation, just based off of that situation alone, we're talking about interest rates, you would think logically, yeah, that... <laughs> that's a funny joke. Um, you would think logically that the... Um, that... Uh, you would want to buy, for example, the Bank of England uh, or, or, the, or the pound uh, and the euro versus uh, the US dollar, right? That would make sense on the surface. Uh, because if they're starting to reduce their interest rates and the other currencies and central banks are looking to continue to hike their rates, right? These guys are doing this, but the USD is likely to, you know, tail off, then, you know, you would say, well, Leon says, you know, that you should want to buy the one with the, uh, that is hiking rate still. But what you need to, again, understand and uh, I'll take into account is the fact that there is something called gross domestic product, right? GDP, right? And, you know, we understand about economic cycles. And so what a determining factor will be as to either the strength of the US dollar, or the continued strength of the dollar, whether, whether we're just going to see a deeper pullback, you know, before going higher, uh, or is this going to be an actual reversal, right, to make lower lows? Because I think that the dollar is going to be, there is an opportunity to potentially start to look to sell the dollar, um, but only for a short term as we start to actually um, tail off when it comes to um, interest rates. But I think this move to the downside on the dollar and, and the headlines are going to read dovish pivot. They're ending their interest rate cycle, um, you know, sell the dollar, sell the dollar, sell the dollar. And, and I think there is going to be a deeper pullback on that. But at some point, yeah, and I think the market knows this already, right, is that from a, from a GDP perspective, Alexandra, I'll get to your question in a, in a sec. Yeah. Um, but there's going to come the GDP aspect, right? And so we've just listened to, you know, some smart money basically say that 
you know, the, the, the US are likely to not go into a recession first. And if they do, it's probably maybe some sort of shallower recession, whereas the Bank of England and the ECB are more likely to head into a deep recession, right? And this is where you will have um, narrative changes, right? This is where you'll start to have narrative changes because all of a sudden it will go from who is best placed in a hiking cycle, yeah, to who is, you know, going to avoid a deep recession and who is going to have a shallow recession. That's what you're going to end up, is going to end up happening, right? So as, again, the dollar starts to, you know, pull back, due to, you know, some sort of profit taking and, you know, everyone falling into the trap, I guess. And I wouldn't say a trap, but falling into the narrative of, you know, dovish pivot. Yeah. What is happening over the medium to long term or what is probably going to happen over the medium to long term is that the, the focus is then going to shift to, well, you know what, although, you know, these guys are potentially hiking rates, but they're pushing their economy into a deeper recession by aggressively hiking and they're worst placed to um, deal with a recession, right? And uh, again, out of the three current countries, or if you're comparing the dollar to any of any countries, again, who is going to be the dog with the least fleas when it comes to the, um, you know, avoiding a recession or who is best placed to get themselves out of a recession sooner rather than later? Yeah. And I hope everybody's following that. Is everyone understanding? Yeah. So these are th this is what I'm preparing myself for. Yeah. This is what I'm preparing myself for. Continue dollar strength for now, right? Continue dollar strength for now, and, and that's backed up by you know bank analysis, etc. Yeah. But there's going to come a period. I don't know when that period is going to be. It could be end of this year. It could be the start of next year, next couple of months, you know, into into next year. Right. But you're going to see pivots. The pivot talk start dovish, you know, Fed, they're easing off interest rates. Yeah. While the Bank of England and the ECB are still hiking rates based off of persistent high inflation now again this is all based off of you know um dollar inflation as well right or, or the u.s inflation because you know how can the fed ease up on 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 interest rates if you know inflation is still you know uh, uh, problematic but if you start to see inflation come down right and you start to see the fed ease up on the um on, on on interest rate hikes there is again i'm saying this yeah making try and make it as clear as possible there will be an opportunity to short the dollar yeah that's the opportunity but there is also going to be just be mindful as you're shorting the dollar of the narrative change right and to be aware that there will be then a shift from interest rates the interest rate narrative yeah to the GDP narrative and recession talk and depression talk, et cetera. And then once you start to see that, the dollar will be the buy again.